Today we're going to run through uh, the 2013 California Building Code amendments that pertain to DSA and OSHPOD. Uh, I'd like to kind of, it'll be sort of a fast-paced session. Uh, I'd like to cover as much as we can. Um, I think as you'll find, um, I'm going to try and touch on some of the key amendments that are continued um, from the 2010 California Building Code, just the significant ones, and then I'll focus primarily on the, the new amendments. Uh, so with that, let's uh, let's get going. Uh, <clears throat> just real quick, in case some some of you aren't familiar with DSA and OSHPOD, uh, DSA is the Division of State Architect. Uh, we have the Plan Review and Supervision of Construction Authority for K through 12 schools, community colleges, and essential service facilities in the state of California. Uh, we have four regional offices, kind of covered by each of these uh, four colors that you see on the on the on the map. And then OSHPOD, um, they cover uh, all the hospitals in the state of California. Um, they're the Office of Statewide Health and Planning uh, and Development. They, uh, for the purpose of this presentation, we're going to focus on what's considered OSHPOD 1 and 4 buildings. So when you go to the California Building Code, there's OSHPOD 1, 2, 3, and 4 buildings. Um, so the OSHPOD 1 and 4 are generally their uh, general acute care hospitals and psychiatric hospitals and some of the correctional treatment centers. Uh, we won't won't be covering any like the outpatient facilities that are covered by local jurisdictions. Um, DSA and OSHPOD, we uh, we used to be one agency. Uh, we now are separate agencies within the state, but we work together on co-adopting uh, standards for schools and hospitals in the state. So, uh, for the mo majority of the presentation, uh, the amendments we discuss will be applicable to both. Uh, and you'll see in a few minutes, uh, I've kind of try to differentiate when when one agency hasn't adopted the other agency's amendments, and we'll we'll denote that as we go. Um, <clears throat> so again, we're going to focus only on the DSA and OSHPOD amendments. We're not going to go into the Building Standard Commission amendments or the HCD, which is the Housing Community Development amendments that might be specific to their programs. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm going to focus primarily on the new amendments, but I will talk about some of the significant continued amendments in the CBC. Um, so I mentioned, uh, I, I kind of made the presentation have a bullet. The bullets are different depending on what the amendment is. Um, if if I want to, sometimes I'll bring up a model code, uh, building code provision um, that are you know from the IBC or one of the, the standards that we reference. And so those will be uh, with an open square. Um, most of the amendments and so forth will be a solid, uh, solid uh, square or solid dot, and that would be our continued amendments or something that got relocated. So if you've done a lot of school work or hospital work, this will be things that are familiar to you, um, uh, the solid dots. Then if it's something new, it'll be a caret or changed or modified. So if you were to scan through the presentation, you'd probably want to focus on the carrots. Uh, the carrots are going to be the new things, uh, and then if some, you know, occasionally there's something different about OSHPA's program than DSA's program, or maybe the building types that we see are generally different than OSHPOD. I say we, meaning DSA. Um, so I've kind of created a different bullet. If it's a kind of a hospital symbol, a red cross, then it, that amendment only applies to OSHPOD, not DSA as well. And similarly, I kind of made a. a a crossing symbol that you see at schools for if an amendment is only applicable to DSA. So just kind of keep that in mind as we're going through, and I'll point them out as we're uh, during the presentation. So you want to try and memorize what these bullets mean. Uh, so quick overview. Uh, I'm going to kind of do a quick brief overview of how the changes are made in the code. Then we'll get into what I'd say the non-structural chapters. Um, you know everything in, in part one. You know one through fifteen, and then we'll talk about the back part of of part two. Uh, chapters uh, 35 and Appendix J, and then after that we'll get into the uh, say the structural chapters are uh, testing inspection, foundations, and concrete, and so forth. And then um, the last part of the presentation we'll talk about community colleges, um, which will be applicable only to DSA, and we'll also talk about Chapter 34 existing buildings. Again, that will only be for DSA. Uh, we're not going to get in today into Chapter 34A, which is uh, adopted only by OSHPOD. They have a very specific existing building program, a lot of it around different uh, non-structural and structural performance categories, and um, and their SB 1953 program. So we're not going to get into that. That would be a whole webinar in itself. Uh, so just 
everyone's familiar, uh, the 2013 California Building Code will be effective at the end of this year, starting January 1. Anything submitted after that date will have to comply with the 2013 CBC.